Good morning. My name is Jeff Jordan from Rescue Agency, and we focus, we're a social change marketing agency. And so what that means is that we work exclusively to cause social change, uh, particularly within public health, um, and have been working here in Virginia with the foundation for, um, for like 15 years now. It's, it's too many. I can't, I can't believe it. Um, and, and one of the things that, that we talk about is, well, when we're trying to change behaviors, when we're trying to change people, what exactly is the way that we're going to get them to change? Right? You can't sit someone down and force them to change. You have to essentially change a factor that they consider within what we would call the equation of change, the various factors that they're considering every time they decide whether to behave one way or another. And there's a number of things we can change. Um, we all know about health education and health communications, and the goal of that is to change their knowledge. Right? The theory is that they don't know something, and so we will give them this piece of information, and that piece of information is important enough for them to reconsider their behavior. Now, a lot of times we, uh, we, we don't quite hit that because we're telling them information they already know, and so we're not really changing anything, but when it works best is when that information is new and motivating. Uh, so that's one way to change people. Another way is to change norms, right? To make something more socially acceptable or to make an unhealthy behavior less socially acceptable. And we do that through communities, through cultures, through influencers, etc. And then lastly, the, the middle one here, changing the environment. I'm sure all of you are working on environmental change strategies. And these strategies are not so much about the person and what's going on inside their head, but more so what's going on around them. Right? and how easy it is to perform the healthy behavior or how hard it is to perform the unhealthy behavior. And so when I say environmental change, you probably already got a policy or some sort of change in your community in your mind. And you've already heard from the other speakers about some of these environments that have such a huge impact on our behaviors. So we have things like sidewalks and bike lanes, healthy checkout lanes, our, our playgrounds, our, you know, what's actually going on in the neighborhood, creating healthy defaults at some of our uh, fast food restaurants, uh, instituting wellness programs at some of our various work work size, all of these things create change around us, which makes the behavior easier for us to perform. And all of these work. Uh, so I'm not here to, to, to bash or, or to discourage you from working on any one of these. You should pursue every single one that you can make happen within your community. But there's one that often gets left out, which is a part of the environment. And it doesn't affect necessarily how easy it is to perform a behavior, but it affects how much a person wants to perform that behavior, particularly when we're talking about young people. And that is that there's meaning to it. And what do I mean by that? Well, we, we all love to talk about how when we were young, you know, we didn't have those cell phones and those video games, and so we would just go outside and run around and play. Well, what I remember from when I was young was that I was bored so I would go outside and play. Because if I sat in my house, there was absolutely nothing to do. So I would go outside looking for something to do. The difference today is not that these phones have ruined outside. It's that now there are all these other options of things that are not boring, right? Things that I can do with my, on my phone, on my uh, iPad, on my, on my computer, on my TV, on my video game console. So it's not so much that, that suddenly I don't want to play outside. It's that I'm not bored, so I'm not going outside to figure out, hey, what's going on? Where are some other kids that I could play with? Because I'm actually playing with them on my phone uh, in a different way, right? And so what these phones and these consoles and all these things have created, it's not that they've made play obsolete. It's that they've just taken all this bore time and they've added meaning to it. Right now, we may not agree with the meaningfulness of being on a Hall of Fame on a, on a video game or getting a bunch of likes on Instagram. That may not sound like meaning to us, but it has added meaning uh, to these activities that children are engaged in. And so the question is, how can we add meaning to physical activity? Now, despite the growing rate of physical activity amongst young people, high school sports participation continues to increase for the 29th consecutive year. Now, how does that make any sense with everything else that we know about the growth of childhood obesity, about the, the lack of physical activity amongst young people? It's because we're not losing physical activity on meaningful activity, activity that's organized, activity that is connected to a higher purpose. We're losing the bored physical activity, the physical activity we used to do when we had nothing else to do. And so what does that mean? Is that, well, there's, there's meaning connected to high school sports. Now, I'm the last one to advocate for high school sports. I did not play a high school sport when, when, when I was personally in high school, and those were not my friends. They were not nice to me. But <laughs> what I will tell you is that high school sports 
creates a purpose. And that purpose, whether it's winning the game this Friday, or whether it's winning state, or whether it's trying to become pro, or whatever that higher purpose is, it makes you want to play that game as much as you can, no matter the environment, no matter what's going on. Right? How many movies have we watched about some superstar athlete who started in the absolute worst environment, right, from all of the things we know about childhood obesity and all the things that contribute to it, all those movies start in the neighborhoods where they're not supposed to be doing physical activity because the neighborhoods are so bad, right? But they did it despite all of that. And why? Because they wanted to because there was something they were trying to achieve that led them to want to do that. And so the question is, rather than complain about all these phones and all these apps and social media and all these things that are distracting our young people, what if we say, well, how can we add more meaning to other kinds of physical activity? Not just the sports that already exist, that the teens who are interested in those are already playing, but are there other kinds of physical activity we could find that we can add meaning to? Because if we add more meaning to things, it results in more organic physical activity, right? We shouldn't be having to structure every single hour of physical activity for young people. We should have young people who want to be physically active and are finding their own ways to be physically active. And the only way that that happens is that we add some of that meaning. So let me give you an example. Uh, a few years ago, um, with the Virginia Foundation for Healthy Youth, we decided to try this out. And we added more meaning to step dancing. It was what we would call an unorganized sport of, of um, uh, step dancing. Don't know what it is. You can see, kind of see these pictures. And we added competitions throughout the state. And by adding these competitions, not organizing the practices or anything, just by adding the competitions, we created thousands and thousands of hours of organic physical activity amongst young people who currently were not engaging in that physical activity. Why? Because we gave it meaning. We gave them competitions, we gave them titles, we gave them a finale, we gave the, fina the finalists a billboard. It was awesome. And that created organic physical activity on their own, in their garages, wherever they could find a space because it had that meaning. So think about what things young people who are not currently active today are interested in, and don't worry about creating a, a space necessarily for them, although that's great. You know, do all the physical change you can, but don't forget about the motivation and the desire to engage in these activities, the meaning to engage in them. Thank you very much.